anyway, it's a different topic. It's slightly different than the uh, uh, what it uh, presented in the abstract. Uh, it's about uh, detection and mapping of uh, subsidence related faulting using uh, multi performance in sub product. Uh, this is a, a presentation uh, by um, uh, Dario Solano Rojas, uh, who was my student at the time. Now he's back, he's a professor at uh, back in Mexico. And you can see the list of uh, uh, people who were involved in this research, including uh, Enrico uh, Cabral Cano, who is here. Uh, and uh, that's, uh, this is just an, a nice uh, view of uh, interferogram, uh, 88 uh, the interferogram uh, over the basin of uh, Mexico uh, City. We can see that uh, uh, the the basin of uh, of Mexico it's uh, located here uh, between uh, volcanic uh, mountains, and this is the sedimentary basin. So this is uh, where we have a lot of subsidence. But uh, so uh, let's uh, look at uh, what we can see over here. This is example of a, a subsidence in Mexico City, as uh, mentioned before, and yes, and two days ago. Uh, there is very rapid subsidence in Mexico City, and uh, uh, we can see uh, some uh, along some of the streets. Uh, we see some gradients, and sometimes it's the uh, you can see the building uh, moving. Sometimes it's uh, you have even uh, very high gradients, like we see over here, uh, and they call it in Mexico. It's, uh, they call it faults. Uh, I remember when we went on a field trip to over there, we had a discussion, is it a fault or not? It's not a tectonic fault, but uh, according to the definition of fault, there is a, a discontinuity, there is displacement, so it, it does uh, fit the, uh, this uh, definition of fault. Uh, so uh, the outline of the presentation, uh, uh, we study here two cities, uh, the case studies uh, of uh, Agua Calientes and Mexico City and uh, look at typical scale of uh, that we need to understand of the, the more continuous and more uh, high gradients or the faults. Uh, we see what type of, uh, from INSA, what we can, uh, what product can be uh, obtained, and then how it, uh, we can uh, uh, workflow to get this uh, data and uh, example for this flow, and then going in even into a larger scale. Uh, so where are the, these two cities located? So this is a map of uh, Mexico. Here is Mexico City uh, in, in central Mexico, and Aguas Calientes is uh, far to the north. And you can see that in Aguas Calientes, uh, there are some really, uh, really, uh, this fault uh, can be two meters apart uh, that uh, formed over there uh, due to groundwater extractions. So in Aguas Calientes, uh, the data we use is uh, ALOS uh, PALSA data uh, from uh, 2007 to uh, 2011, and six uh, TERASAR X uh, covering similar time period. Mexico City, we have 144 scenes from Sentinel-1 covering the period of 2014 uh, to 2017, and also Cosmo SkyMed uh, from a uh, similar period uh, from uh, the uh, 2011 to 12. Uh, so wh what do we see when uh, we have a, a surface, uh, when we have uh, extraction of uh, water, sometimes we have uh, just a little bit, uh, a little pumping, uh, and some, we have something heavy, we have a load, uh, and uh, this is, uh, we have a lot of pumping. Uh, the load is actually uh, subsides into the, uh, the rock over there. So uh, uh, we have a little pumping. We have something that we can live with. A lot of pumping, it's become sometimes unbearable. Uh, so uh, we've seen that before in my presentation, my keynote, but here we just uh, took uh, just a few uh, 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 processes, uh, uh, talking about uh, the short uh, wavelengths, uh, in this case is fault and not sinkholes, uh, soil consolidation, uh, fluid extraction, then we see the time scales over here, and uh, here is the standard resolution, high resolution, so we basically can cover uh, uh, monitoring these uh, 
uh, processes using uh, both uh, high resolution and standard resolution uh, INSA. Uh, also, we need the good DM to understand the geomorphology. Uh, so when we look at the high resolution uh, uh, interferogram, uh, we use only uh, two scenes, so we, have, we form interferograms, and uh, the, we can detect discontinuity, which allow us to uh, monitor uh, these faults. So what we see in the uh, white lines, these are uh, faults that uh, were measured uh, in field uh, work over there. And the red lines are discontinuities in the uh, in this uh, interferogram, and we can see that uh, in many places we see some uh, good uh, agreement between them, right over here and over here, but not everywhere. But it shows that the INSA can be uh, very useful for detecting these uh, discontinuities. Uh, another uh, high resolution. Uh, a, a product is that when we have enough data, we can do a time series analysis and have a velocity map, as we can see over here. Uh, and uh, we can, with a velocity map, we can also uh, get a gradients that we can see over here. And this is comparison of uh, the gradient. And what we see in these uh, rose diagrams is orientation of the fault in uh, different locations that were measured in the field. Uh, so we can see that uh, we have a method of comparing uh, field uh, uh, observation with uh, uh, the gradients. So uh, gradients can actually be used uh, to detect these discontinuities. Uh, so how to locate subs uh, subsidence-related faulting? Uh, we have to, this is a workflow, we have uh, SAR data, we ask ourselves uh, if we have high resolution, it's available. If not, we work with the default uh, Sentinel-1 uh, data, and we go do ti time series. We calculate the uh, uh, subsidence gradient, and from there we can uh, uh, estimate where the uh, uh, faults are. Uh, if we have high resolution, if we have just a if we have enough for time series uh, analysis, we will, uh, if we don't have enough, we'll do just high resolution interferogram. And again, we estimate from the discontinuities where are the, the faults. And uh, if we have enough, we'll perform high resolution time series, uh, do some post processing, and detect uh, fault surfaces. And additional information that is needed is field data for uh, verification and DEM, uh, and which allow us also to do uh, slope calculation and uh, calculate uh, where we have fault and all of that. Uh, we integrate and uh, produce uh, integrated analysis and interpretation of the this uh, data. So here is the example. Here is Aguas Calientes. Uh, the map on the left show uh, where the, the field uh, map, map the faults, right over here. Uh, over here is the, uh, the, if I remember correctly, the field data for slope map from using, uh, from just from the topography. And then in the next slide, we're going to look at this uh, square right over here in the frame. And this is a velocity map. Uh, and field data, and we just looking at the velocity map, we don't get enough information about the uh, where the fault, except of the graben. Uh, these are the Aguascalientes graben, so only these two big fault uh, provide some information. So uh, if we look at the uh, high resolution interferogram, as I mentioned before, uh, we can see there is a uh, we can detect uh, this is uh, three years, one year, two and a half years, and three years. And each one of us give us some uh, more information or slightly different information where the discontinuities are. And uh, we can uh, uh, detect that information from here. Uh, when we go for Mexico City and we, we do the um, velocity map, uh, so this is the... Uh, a Sentinel uh, velocity map uh, of uh, Mexico City. And if we do uh, velocity, you can see it goes from zero to uh, a 400 millimeter per year. 
Uh, this is the area where we have the highest uh, gradients over here, and the, right over here. And so this is a, a gradient uh, map uh, derived from the uh, Sentinel-1 uh, map. And this is a, uh, a field data uh, suspected uh, using, this is, this is uh, from Sentinel, but this is from Cosmo. Uh, where we, uh, the analysis where we see the fault uh, based on the analysis of the Cosmo data. And this is a map provided by the government where faults are. And we can see that uh, there is overall very good agreement between these, the overall shape and some of the details where the fault, uh, uh, where the faults are located using uh, a field observation and a post-processing of uh, velocity maps. Uh, now we go to a bigger uh, scale, and uh, as Dario uh, wrote, is a game changer, a Sentinel-1 and B data, uh, analysis of the entire uh, uh, nation of uh, Mexico. You can see there are many data more of uh, 100 terabyte of raw data along the different tracks. And just to give you an idea how big is this area, uh, this is the Mexico, with respect to Western Europe, and you can see that uh, Mexico uh, cover a very large part of uh, Western Europe. So it's a big uh, country. It, maybe we don't uh, appreciate it when we look at it uh, in this uh, frame, but uh, when we compare it to Europe, it's a big country. Uh, so again, the uh, insert processing chain here is uh, download the data, doing uh, the geometric uh, co-registration uh, and uh, doing interferometric uh, interferogram generation, network in inversion using uh, over here it's ICE and MinPy, doing the time series correction and do uh, average uh, velocity. So this is uh, the standard product and then displacement time series. And uh, so this is the, the different uh, uh, packages that I've uh, been using over here, the ICE and MinPy. And uh, so this is the, uh, uh, the network uh, with uh, uh, many uh, short temporal uh, baseline, but very high uh, coherence. And uh, this is the amount of scenes that are uh, used in this uh, analysis. You can see from some area with only 10 scenes up to 160 here in Mexico City. So uh, lots of data. And this is a coherence map uh, of, we can see that uh, in the central part, we have a very high coherence, the arid part, uh, but low coherence where we have vegetation right uh, in this area, we can see that over here, this is in the Yucatan Peninsula. It's uh, tropical, a lot of vegetation, low coherence, except of in uh, the urban area of Cancun. Uh, also here on the coast, uh, we can see that the, uh, the area uh, over here is vegetated, low coherence. In the mountains, more arid, uh, we have high uh, coherence. Uh, or in uh, this area over in uh, southern uh, uh, Mexico over here, or again, vegetated. So, but there's plenty of area with uh, a low, uh, with high coherence. And here is the uh, velocity uh, results in loss. And we can see that uh, uh, the different location with a, a high velocities and uh, the velocity are re reported in a plus minus a nine centimeter per year. So we, we see a, some area with a high subsidence. And these are, again, these two a, a cities, uh, two areas. This is Aguas Calientes. Uh, we can see this is uh, no ve uh, zero velocity when we outside of the graben, and then in the graben we see high uh, subsidence, especially in the eastern part, right over here. And this is where we have these faults on both sides of the the city. And in uh, this is uh, Mexico City, the southern part, and we can see again this is a subsidence rate goes all the way to in this case at uh, twenty. Uh, 
20 centimeter per year. And we can see there is a, a high uh, volcanic structure over here, uh, one of the, the volcanic structures with zero subsidence over here, but a very high subsidence uh, on both sides. And this is where we have the high gradients and we have the faults uh, right over here. So uh, this is uh, the end of the presentation. Uh, the acknowledgement is again to uh, the funding agencies. Uh, NASA was supposed, uh, uh, Dyer was uh, he received uh, Fulbright and Conocit uh, fellowships and the data from the different uh, agencies. And any question? Thank you. Thank you very much, Simon. Yes. First of all, I see uh, uh, you have uh, used a lot of inside image to cover the old Mexico. So when you do the uh, mosaic, the result, do you encounter any uh, problem with that? When you because you have an uh, inside result, uh, and you will do the mosaic. Right? It's a very very good uh, uh, question. How to do the mosaic? Uh, I personally didn't uh, run into problem, but Dario uh, and I, I'm not sure what is the method he used, but uh, they they did. Uh, Took care of that, but uh, in most of the areas there was no deformation, so I think it's not a, a big issue. I mean, the, when you have deformation, then it becomes an issue. But if it's both of them are on zero, uh, then it's not much of an issue. So I am, but it's something I'll uh, check with uh, Dario when. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, more questions in the back? Maybe you can uh, speak up. Uh. So the, uh, the yeah basically uh, you look at the is it two neighboring uh, uh, pixels and you calculate what is the gradients uh, between uh, them uh, so you have to look on both sides uh, and actually it's not just a long line because in one study we did a long line but here is actually you look on the neighboring and you calculate what is the uh, uh, you the also difference have a, have a certain orientation probably and along which you calculate that or not well yeah it's uh i suspect uh, you calculate uh, in both uh, according to the grid mm -hmm. so you calculate the difference between uh, the grids so in the east and the north direction yeah, yeah right. okay yeah you want to follow up or? and uh, when you match the fault was well, that from the gradient manually, or was it more automated? Well, the the one that uh, generated from the the INSA is just where you have high. It's, we didn't map the fault. We we just report the high gradients. So it's uh, the the field you have to actually to transfer it to, map. but the the INSA is just we report where we have high gradients. That's all. Well, it's what. What is the definition of fault? Yeah, you're, you're right. It depends on the, from the theoretical view. I think most of them are not the fault, but uh, from uh, the tectonic community or I mean, the, the, the tectonic community wouldn't call it fault. But but from structural geology, if you describe just a phenomena, what what is a fault is actually you have uh, two rocks or materials that there is displacement between them. If it's just the, there is a crack, but the fault there is a displacement, and here we see we measure the displacement. So, uh, but I the, guess the other thing is, of course, that the the land is going down. So, so that means that uh, it's a normal there fault. must be a certain depth over which this is accommodated. So the fault will. Uh, go on uh, yeah. the sub in the subsurface, right? It goes in the subsurface, but I, we don't know how deep it of is. Of course, yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe associated to that, if, if you label this as a fault, then that will have a certain dip, right? And if it has a dip, it means that you indeed may expect a certain uh, horizontal deformation, 
and it will be like a normal fold probably yeah, because that is the mechanism that we have here so uh, that, is, that means that you could expect a horizontal component orthogonal to the full direction and yes really i mean one of the, the images which you show in aguas calientes it was opening of two meters mm -hmm. and uh so there is a shortening over there uh, in, a, in, in i mean uh, in normal, when we think tectonically, when we have normal, it's, it's, it's extension. Uh, so it's, it's extension over there, but overall the uh, the area between the graben is going down. Mm -hmm. So there is a, it's shortened with respect to the the, the boundary, uh, the margin of the the graben. So okay. we we have a, a movement. It's a differential movement between the the margins yes. and the inside. So you would expect also horizontal motion. In that, that yeah, yeah. Like that. Okay. Any further any comment on it? I, I, I had a lot of discussion with them because I came with this uh, also I'm I did tectonics and all of yeah, that and yeah. But uh, over there, they call it fault. The government produce fault maps, and uh, yeah. that's the terminology over there. Right. Yeah. In that case, both, both segments go down. One goes down with uh, just a bigger uh, speed. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's bigger on one side of the fault. But actually, sometimes we have uh, uh, this differential displacement on top of faults because we have a difference on the thickness of the sediment on top of the fault. So that's why they are. Relate with an existing fault, but we cannot claim that we have an excavation of the fault. So, okay, maybe it follows a fault, but it's not a fault. It's a <laughs> yeah, so maybe maybe we can use the coffee break to come up with some new terminology, right? I think that would be cool. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much, sir. All right.